Hey guys, uh, we're out here on the AJ remodel project. Um, this is the first time I've done any commentary on this project, uh, but we're getting towards the end and I'm here today to install a cool barn door right here. So I've got to put the whole thing together. Came in a box here, ordered it from Wayfair. I'll have a link in the description on the barn door that we're using. And then for the finish on the barn door and the countertop, we're using this Rubio Monocoat Oil Plus 2C, and the color is bourbon. So yeah, those are the last few things we gotta do, and we'll be done with this project. Hope you guys enjoy the video. So the first step's a little confusing. You've got three of these rails that go in and the side side rail and you want to make sure that the small groove the tall small groove is on the bottom for the door track um, there's a guide that goes on the bottom and that's what this groove down here is for and so the two middle pieces look very similar they've got a groove on both sides but the one with the big grooves goes in the middle and the one with the deeper smaller groove goes on the bottom for that guide. So for these slats, you want to start with the one with no groove, and that's your first one. It has a tongue on this side. And just slide it in. Then the next three have a tongue and a groove. just has a groove, no tongue on the other side. So the kit comes with a drill bit for Phillips and it's kind of extended because the screws that we're going to attach through the side rails are kind of recessed. So before installing the diagonal supports, you want to probably make sure all your tongue and grooves are nice and tight. I noticed when I stood it up to kind of screw it together, they were moving around a little bit. So There's also a little bit of a gap on that side, so I might try and shift things over to make sure there's no gaps before I screw the diagonals in. So this is really soft pine, so you're going to want to make sure you don't try and put these in too hard. Uh, just nice and easy, slow, and get them nice and snug.
flipped it over, we're gonna do the other side. And it looks like we're doing the same uh, area of the door, but it's actually the opposite because when we flip the door over, our angles are going this way. And so we run them this way, it's gonna make the door a lot stronger. We got a crisscross pattern. It doesn't say that in the instructions, but I'm pretty sure that's what we should do. So the instructions tell you to put these plugs on the sides before you do that step, but I think you should do the angle brackets first just so it holds all those planks in place. So now we can lift the door up and install these and not have to worry about the middle parts moving all around. Okay, so that's the finished door assembly. You want to make sure you've got that groove lined up on the three bottom parts, the two side rails and the bottom rails. Um, and then make sure these holes are on the top. This is the top of the door and this is what the hardware attaches to so the door can hang on the track. So now what we'll do is install the track on this wall right over here. And I knew we were going to be doing a barn door, so I installed a big 2 by header across this whole opening just so I'd have something to screw this door into because we wanted a nice drywall, clean looking finish. A lot of times people put those header boards across for barn doors. I don't really like that look, so we made sure to put something in there so we could get a nice clean look with this door opening. Okay, so now we need to mark the location of our holes for our top track. And according to the instructions, we measure the door, which is 84, and we add an inch and 11 sixteenths. And that's our center mark for our holes, for our top rail. The other thing you wanna make sure you do is if you have an unlevel floor, is start from the high side. So I already put a level on this floor, and my high side's on the left. The reason you want to do that is because if you go off of the low side and you've got a pretty big variance in your floor, your door is going to bind up on the high side if you measure from the low side. So you want to make sure you start from the high side. That way your door is never going to bind up on the floor because the floor is dropping away from the door. So we're at 84 plus 11 sixteenths. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or I'm sorry, an inch and 11 sixteenths. 85. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's 85 and three quarters. A little bit short. So I'm just going to put one mark for now and grab our rail so we know where the holes are at. I'm just going to kind of eyeball the levelness of it and just mark out where the holes are so that way we don't mess up the nice clean paint finish and we know that those are going to get covered and we can level everything across to make a nice line right where the holes are. Also split the difference. This track is slightly smaller than the area we have here. So I split the difference, left a little gap, the same gap on each side, and made sure it extended all the way to the end of our door here. 
So now we've got the holes marked, we can level across from our initial mark. And we'll just draw a nice level line through each one of our hole locations. Before we install the track, we want to make sure we put these on first. These are door stops. Uh, if we don't put these on first and we don't have room on the ends, you're going to have to undo all those bolts and you're going to hate, hate your life. So make sure you put the door stops on before you mount this to the wall. You want to make sure you put the Allen wrenches that hold the door stops onto the bar towards the top so you don't see those. You want to be real careful not to damage the paint finish on the bolts or the track. So that's kind of why I'm using a crescent wrench here to try to minimize friction. It takes a little bit longer, but you don't want to damage that finish. Another thing to note is we're installing into drywall so I don't want to over tighten and uh, have it start to sink into the drywall so I'm just getting them nice and snug. Alright now it's time to put the wheels on and it's up to you to pick whichever side you want to face out. Now we need to install these bumpers, which get mounted roughly here, and they can turn away when you're putting the door in, and you turn them back 
when the door is on the track. And you just keep the door from hitting the track and keep kind of keep it locked on the rail here. You want to make sure your hole is half inch from the edge of the door. And that's going to give us room to turn this thing out of our way and put it back where it needs to be. You don't want this thing hanging over when it's in place. You just want to be able to move it out like that so you can put the door on and then push it back in place once, once it's on the rail. So we ran into a problem. Uh, the bolts on the back side of the hangers or the rollers is hitting the door trim so the door doesn't want to slide properly. I know in the past some barn doors that I've used have come with various spacers to put in to account for that kind of stuff but for some reason this kit doesn't have those so I'm going to have to run to the hardware store and get some spacers. Uh, hopefully we can find some black ones that are big enough. Um, so we can bring that door out slightly and so it will stop rubbing on the door trim. Another thing we could do is just get some black washers and just kind of build them out until we know we're right where we need to be. Okay, so I was able to find some nylon um, spacers that are black that fit over the bolt. And Okay, so now that we got the door up there, it's sliding nicely. It's not scraping the door trim, so that's what we want. So now we just have to set the door stop so that the door closes and gives you privacy in the bathroom. And make sure it doesn't hit this wall. And then on the bottom, we just need to put in this little, I guess, T-bar that'll follow that groove in the door and will keep the door from flopping back and forth. So there it is. We got a barn door now on the little half bathroom down here. Uh, it's not the most private door style for a bathroom, but that's what the homeowner wanted here. And this is just going to be like an office area for him, anyways. So, uh, one thing I noticed about this door kit is the pine side rails aren't the straightest they're kind of twisted a little bit 
or warped so kind of made the the door a little twisted that way it's not the highest quality door but it was in our budget and there might be a way to kind of tweak it with some clamps and some stuff so I might try and do that but looks nice got a nice cottage feel to it a barn style feel